I'm going to show you how to create an interactive mobile menu or a hamburger menu. Um, I'm going to take you through the whole process where we also add the content to the page. So if you've already added adaptive views, uh, you know, the computer screen view and the mobile view to your project, skip this part, jump to the bit where I start making the menu. But if you haven't done your website or you still have to add some stuff, maybe start watching from here. I've got four new pages, index, about, contact and products. And now I'm going to add my adaptive views. So I've got a mobile view and I've got a computer view. I can go over here, inspector pane, style tab, or you can go to project, adaptive view sets. I'm just going to do it over here. So we start off with the base and we're going to use a preset and I'll use large display 1200 by any. 1200 is good because then you can do a 12 column grid based on a 1200 width. So that's my first width. Then I'm going to add an adaptive view and this will be for mobile devices. And I'm just going to choose one of the presets. I'm going to choose one of the top ones for web because we want to be able to scroll down. The ones down here give a set height and we don't want that. So I'm going to choose portrait phone. It's only 320 pixels wide, so it won't actually activate on any modern phone really, but it is a good way to demonstrate um, changing to an adaptive view so that's why we're going to use it. I'm going to click OK and we can see that this is um, enabled because you can see large display portrait phone and if I click on portrait phone um, and I just move over here you can see that we now have a much narrower view. I need to add this to every page it doesn't come automatically so I've gone through to the contact page and I can just click through the tabs here or double click over here add adaptive views and we've got it as our first option large display portrait phone again change to portrait phone go to about we do the same add adaptive views large display portrait phone and we'll just activate that portrait phone and this is my home page the index page add adaptive views large display portrait phone and all of that is set so i can start adding some content I'm going to keep it simple, the content, because the main purpose is just to show that we have navigated to a new page where needed. So on my index, my home page, I'm just going to drag the heading over. I'm going to set it down a little bit at 100. And I'll call this home. Um, normally, of course, you'd give it the name of the website or some welcoming message or something. But this is just so that we know that we're on the home page. We'll go to about, I'm going to paste that and say about us. I'll go to contact, paste that, contact us. And um, the thing is, I'm going to make the headings as standard as possible so that it keeps a continuity of the design. Um, then we might want to place an image after that. And again, I might want this across all of my pages. And if I just paste using keyboard shortcuts, that's all good. And in fact, on products, I might want to have multiple pictures here. So I'm just pasting this placeholder. Um, there we go. There we go. And what I can do if I zoom out of whoop, too much zoom, if I zoom out, I can select these and where we've got our alignment, I can open this up and I can actually distribute those vertically and that's just move them a touch. Okay, and then I can add, um, what can I add, a little label to each of these so that we've got the name of the product. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste. I mean, ideally, these are for use in um, in forms, but I'm just going to use one here for the simplicity. So do apologize if um, you disagree with my use of the label in this context, but this is really just to demonstrate different content. Okay, so we've got products on that page. Let's go to contact us. So contact us, you would usually have a form um, let's run through this. In fact, I'll need a label for my form, of course, because that's what labels are for. And uh, so I want a text field to start off with. 
might want to narrow no that'll be fine there so I've got there we go okay um, and then I might copy the label again um, in fact what I should have done is copy both of these because that might be a password or something like that and then we might want copy and paste a contact form so let's go and do a uh, text area for typing a message and I'm just making sure this aligns nicely with everything and then we're going to find a nice little button to pop down the bottom and this is a mobile view so we're going to make this button nice and wide okay so we've got our contact us page about is probably mostly going to be text so I'll just make sure I've got my widget snap on so it's aligning nicely between my widgets and this is you know this might be all I need to have on this page and then we go to the index page you can navigate either using the pages or you can use the tabs up here so now we're on the home page and we might have an h2 heading a um, couple of paragraphs and this of course is the mobile view so we're only using one column here okay so I've got all of my content I'm ready to start making my menu. Now we're going to create the mobile menu. So the first step is the menu itself. Now I'm going to have it appear on top of the text. There are ways you can actually move that text out of the way, but I don't see any benefit to that in a mobile menu um, because really the menu is going to fill most of the screen anyway. So I'm going to drag a box over, just make sure it's the width of my mobile screen and then I'll make it as long as I need it to be and yeah that's looking about right there. So next I need to make my links so I'm going to drag over some H2 headings now I'm going to move them down a bit because I want a little icon to turn it on and off up above. So I'll give these the names of my pages. So I've got home there. I'll copy and paste this. In fact, I'll just paste it four times for my four pages. And remember, if you've got more than four pages in your um, sitemap, you want to have links to all of those really. Um, okay, whoopsie, selected too many things because I want to align these vertically as well. So I just open this up vertical and that aligns them nicely now I just rename these so I'll have home about us contact us products and let's just do one little thing more what I might do is uh, if I find the little horizontal line and it's always a matter of balancing between the big bold bits and the little subtle bits that just make a nice effect there so I'm just going to add a little horizontal whoopsie grab the wrong thing and add a little horizontal rule there and I'll just make sure that that color is the right color for what I want. So I'll just choose a darker gray there. Yeah, it's a bit too dark. Oopsie. Okay, let's do that a bit lighter again. Okay, that's not too bad. So, you know, you would just make little subtle ways to... Oh, goodness me, I keep grabbing the wrong thing. <laughs> doing it again. <laughs> okay. Got it. <laughs> so I'll just grab that, drag it down pacing again, dragging it down, grab the right thing that time, so that was good. <laughs> okay, and this time what I might do is I might grab all of these and now I'll do the vertical distribution again and that will just divide them up nicely. Okay, this is blending in a bit to the background though, so I might change this colour a little bit, um, make it a little bit darker. There we go, now we can tell this is our menu. 
Um, okay, so we've got this part. Now what I want to do is have um, links to go to the different pages. I don't want it to just be the text because usually with a mobile phone you need a nice big area where people can tap um, without missing their target. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab a dynamic panel don't want to put it too high because again I need to have a little um, mobile menu icon that I can tap on. Now this has no fill. You can see over here the colour. There's no colour at all. It's a zero border. So that's completely transparent. I'm going to call this the home button. Um, now of course you can have the text on top and do um, the text changing colour on rollover and things but I'm keeping this simple for now uh, because otherwise the video is going to take forever. Uh, okay, here's about us so I'm going to do about button and I'm just doing copy and paste with um, control C I'm on a PC if you're on a Mac command C and then control V or on a Mac command V um, and I'm just pasting these invisible buttons um, and naming them the name of the pages it's a really good idea to name all of your um, all of your items on the page, all of your widgets, because it makes it much easier to figure out later on. So I'm going to call this one products. And in fact, if I show you my outline, you can see products button, contact button, um, etc, etc. And it makes it much, much easier to organize your pages and know what is having effect on different things. Now let us um, create links. So we select our invisible button, we go to interactions, new interaction, click or tap, open link, and then you choose which internal page you want to go to. And I'm going to click, okay, you do have more options of changing it uh, in different positions but uh, you want it to load in the main window so we're not going to muck about with that. Now we're on to the about button. New interaction, click or tap, open, link, about, OK and you just do this for every single one. Now we're doing this in one place once. I'll show you what we'll do to make sure that we don't have to repeat this over and over. So I'm going to uh, click or tap, open link, and this one's the contact button, so we open the contact page and the product, new interaction, click or tap, open link, products and click OK. So we now have a working menu. So that I don't have to copy and paste the same thing on each page and then if I change anything I have to change it on every page. Um, what I want to do is change this to a uh, dynamic panel first, so I grab the background uh, actually what I'll do is I will go to the outline that will make it easier because I've got text underneath it if I select this whole thing I might be selecting that text so we've got the products button in fact let's move this down so we can see it I'm holding the shift key down contact button about button home button line whoops line line and then we've got the text the products oh, keeps moving contact us about us sorry about the screen ch changing home and then finally this background rectangle and that selects everything I'm currently using in that menu right click and then we're going to create a dynamic panel out of it and we're going to call this the mobile menu DP or dynamic panel why well we're also going to have a mobile menu master later on so we have to know the difference between them um, okay, so this is the mobile menu DP and in fact to make the mobile menu master this is what we're going to use. So I'm going to go right click and create master. It's just one above the create dynamic panel and we're going to call this mobile menu master continue. Okay, so we've got that and um, I can add that to each page. So we've got that on the index page now. Let's go to our other pages. One other thing I'll show you before I drag it is if I go to the about page. Now if I drag this on, it just sort of goes where it wants to go and I don't want that. Um, what I want is maximum laziness possible. So right click, drop behavior, rather than place anywhere, lock it to the master location. This is fabulous. So then if I drag it across, bam, it just locks back to where it should go. 
drag it across, bang. And on here, we'll just drag it across and it goes exactly where it needs to go. Hooray. Okay, so the next part of the video will show you how we can add a little hamburger menu icon to this. I'm just going to make the hamburger icon using widgets within Axia RP. I recommend you make it a lot more stylishly than what I'm about to do um, using Illustrator or another graphics program. So how am I going to do this? Well, first off, I need to be within this master because I want it to be repeated across all of my pages. So if I double click, I'm now in the master. And this is about the time when everyone freaks out and says, oh my goodness, my menu's vanished. What do I do? Now, the thing is we're in the large display. We've got to go to the portrait phone to see it. Um, it's really awkward, the master view, because you see how the page just stretches on as if there's no adaptive view. You actually can't add an adaptive view. Um, oh, hang on, add it master views. This must be a new thing. Oh, how exciting. Okay, let's see if it allows me no, no, it doesn't. I got really excited for no reason with the latest update. But anyway, I'm sure it does lovely things elsewhere. So anywho, we have our mobile menu dynamic panel, but now we need to add a hamburger menu to it. So if I go to my libraries, all I'm going to do is drag a horizontal line up to the top where I, about where I would push a mobile menu. Let's make it the width that I want it to be. So that's quite cute. I like that. Not too big, not too small. And down in the style, I'm going to increase the thickness. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste. Now I could, if I was being very good, I would rename each of these lines so we know exactly what it is. I'm going to, is that okay? Yeah, I think that's all right. Probably should be a bit closer together, but like I said, this is um, more for technical skills than design recommendations. There we go, that's distributed nicely. So this is my hamburger menu. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all three of those horizontal lines. And if you're wondering why it's called a hamburger menu, well, because it looks a bit like a hamburger. You've got the bun on the top, the bun on the bottom, and the patty, whether that happens to be meat or non-meat alternative, in between. So it looks like a hamburger to people who've never seen a hamburger before. So I'm gonna right click on that. I've selected all three lines, and now I'm going to create a dynamic panel. And this one, because I love labeling everything, is going to be my hamburger icon. Okay. Now, many hamburger icons, once you click them, they change. They change to a cross so that you know this is where you tap to close the menu again. And this is exactly what I want to do. How are we going to do this? I'm going to double click. And looky, looky at this blue border. That means we're into the states of a dynamic panel. This is why it's called a dynamic panel, because of all of these different states that you can do incredible things with when it comes to interaction design. So the default is state one, and that's our hamburger icon. I'm just gonna select one of these so I get the thickness right. And I'm going to add a state to state two. Now I could give these names. I could call state one, could call this one close menu, you know, whatever, doesn't really matter because I'll show you what I'm going to do in a minute. Um, so I'm going to paste that in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into my cross. So I'm just going to select it there. Let me see what the width should be. Yeah, it's looking a little bit on the big side. So I'm just going to drag this up a little bit. Just want to match it so it doesn't look really weird when I switch from one to the other. Okay, that's not looking too bad. So I'll just copy and paste that and then I'm just going to sort of put it the opposite. There's probably a mirror icon somewhere. I do not know where it is. I'm sorry, I've failed you all. Um, but we're still going to have a cute little mobile menu icon. Now, like I said, do this in Illustrator where it's going to look better. This is not a graphics program, as you can see. Okay, that, that looks awful. That looks so bad. I should just type X and, and change the size. But you know what? I'm just going to leave it. Moving on. So we've got state one. We've got closed menu, state one. We could state two, state three, state whatever. It doesn't matter. We've got two states. One, the default shows how to open our menu and the other one shows how to close. So this gives us our 
hamburger icon now I'm going to close out of this because I don't need that state anymore and the next part of the video is going to show you how we can add an interaction to this icon itself let's add the interaction now so um, what I need to do when it loads it has to be in this state here and when I click on it it has to change to the other state so I'm just going to click on the background remember we're in the mobile menu master so this is going to take effect on any page that I drag this onto clicking on the back means that you're adding an interaction to the page itself or in this case the master itself I'm going to go to interactions I'm going to select new interaction and there's one down here page loaded it used to be called on page load or on load or something like that but page loaded means do this thing when the page loads and that's what we want so what we want to do is set a panel state so we choose that and then it says hey what one are you talking about and it has all our different stuff here and it's the hamburger icon itself so I click on that and when the page loads I want it to be in state one that's the hamburger icon itself so I'm going to click OK now we want to add another interaction and this one will actually be on the menu icon uh, because it's a button basically as I tap it it's going to change the states so um, now I need to select that not the page itself but the hamburger icon click uh, oh hang on click or tap set next state now this is handy to look at to see common interactions it basically says yeah you got a dynamic panel it has two states usually that means at some stage you're going to want to click or tap it and set the next state so let's do that you can also go new interaction tap or click set next state but this is a shortcut now interestingly it says target this what does that mean that means that I've got a widget selected and it says okay do you want the interaction to happen on the widget that you've got selected it's a little bit of um, shorthand when it comes to programming so you can either say this or you can select the icon itself the hamburger icon and you see they're exactly the same I'll keep it as this now it's got state next if we go and have a look at this you'll see I've got state one close menu you remember that's what I called my state two just to show that you could rename these states but we also have next previous and some other ones I'm not going to go into a bit more complicated so I want next because what we want to do is we want it to change if it's on the the X I want to tap it and change it to the hamburger if it's on the hamburger I want to change it to the X so doing next will work until you get to the end of the states if I write if I write if I click and select wrap from last to first it will then go to the initial state again so it'll just keep going between the two states and that's exactly what I want you can also animate it uh, I'm not going to do that it looks a little bit weird to be honest so I'm just going to click OK now the next thing you always want to do is test it test it after you make every change to make sure it works in fact I really should have done that after adding the links because of course a menu you want to make sure the links work um, and if you test it at each step you know exactly where you went wrong if everything falls down in a heap okay so if I go through to index okay do I have this on each page yes I do yes I do fantastic let's go and test this by clicking on preview and it's opening up now this is again where people freak out and say it's not showing up something's gone catastrophically wrong and in fact it has not because remember I made this website in the phone view and it doesn't inherit up so it's not seeing any of my content if I go to portrait phone there we go it's there so I can test this now a way you can tell what page you're on now I deliberately put a heading on so I know which page I'm on but of course my menu is covering that up I can open this menu side panel or frame um, from my Axia frame here just by clicking on this 
da, 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 hamburger menu. Um, so we've got index, so I'm on the index page. Now if I go to the About Us page, there we go, and it's gone to About Here. If I go to Products, it's taking me to Products. Fantastic. And if I click on my icon here, it changes. So that is definitely working as well. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how we then do that last bit of interaction where we make our mobile menu itself appear and disappear as we click on the hamburger icon. Okay, now we're doing the next step, which is showing and hiding our menu. We have to go back to the mobile menu master, remember, because if we're doing this on individual pages, it means we have to repeat those interactions on each page. If we do it in the master, it's automatically going to flow through to each page. Now, what we want to do, there's two steps to this. First, we want to actually hide this menu when the page loads, because otherwise we're not gonna see the name of the page. So I click on the background and we've already got an interaction here. Page loaded, set panel state hamburger icon to state one. We want to add another one. So if I hold it down here, you see how we've got add action, which is mercifully a darker text on a light background. The old version of Axia had a light gray button and it was just terrible, but this is a lot more accessible. So thank you, Axia. I'm gonna click on that. Um, so when the page is loaded, we also want to show or hide, and we want to hide the mobile menu DP. So let's choose hide there. We don't want an animation because we just want it to be hidden and that is it. And we click OK. Now, if I go and load this now, if we go and preview, and of course not working because we're in the wrong size. Okay, at this point, a lot of students think it's broken, it's not working, I've done something wrong. Now, if we click on another link here, Look at that, it's working. It's not you, it's it's Axia. Uh, basically, it doesn't recognize the first loading of the site as a loading of the page. I know, well, that's my interpretation. Maybe it's more involved and less stupid, um, but that's my interpretation of it. So we actually have to do a bit of a workaround to make sure this works. So where normally in the mobile menu master, we click on the background and we can see we've got that and it's working because we've tested on other pages. The way we make sure this is hidden when we initially load is you select the mobile menu DP, not this icon up here. Remember, we need that to be showing at all times, but we want to select the mobile menu dynamic panel style and you'll see this teeny weeny little eye icon and if you hover over it it says hidden if i click on that it hides it you still see it it's like this light peachy pink color just to remind you there's actually something here we're just hiding it and now if we go through and test this and remember i do always recommend you do test these as you go because that way you know exactly where you made the mistake when it doesn't work so portrait phone and this time it works and if I click here it changes my menu <laughs> it looks terrible please do it in Illustrator where it looks better um, so that's working we've we've successfully hidden our menu but that doesn't make the menu very usable because we need to show it again how do we do that back in the mobile menu master now we're going to click on our hamburger menu because this is what we click to make the menu appear so we go to interactions we've already got a click or tap set panel state to make sure it changes the um, hamburger icon now we're going to add an action down here remember this isn't a new interaction we're just adding an action to the click or tap add the action and this time we are going to show or hide and if we scoot on down and the great thing about this is as you hover over you can see what the different um, widgets are. It visualizes it to the side if you've forgotten to name it, though it is a better idea to name it. Um, so we're gonna do this to the mobile menu DP. So I select that. And again, we're choosing toggle because if it's hidden and I tap the menu, I want it to show. If it's showing and I tap the menu, I want it to hide. 
and it's really cool to animate it too. So I'm going to have it slide down and slide up. That's pretty common for mobile phones. What is also cool is if you animate this as well, but um, that's beyond the scope of what I'm doing in this video. Um, and it's a bit more tricky to get right. Now there's another option, um, which is push and pull the widgets underneath. I don't want to do that uh, because it's a mobile menu. It's covering the stuff anyway. It's not going to make it any better. It is an option there if you are showing and hiding things, but I wouldn't worry with a mobile menu. So I'm going to click OK. So we've now got two two interactions or two actions on this interaction. You click or tap, it changes this which is the hamburger menu to next and it wraps it around to the start. It shows or hides the mobile menu DP as well. So now we go back to the index page. Let's go and preview and we will test this. Let's go to portrait phone and open. There we go and close. Wonderful. And of course you can have a little bit of a gray header up here if you want that it slides down from. That can look good as well. But this is working. Let's go to another page and it hides the menu again. We can open it and go to contact us. Hides it again. Open that. Go to products. We have a mobile menu. I'm just going to wrap up the video by showing you how to then create the computer view menu because of course we're doing adaptive views and that means adaptive design where you have one layout for a computer and another for a mobile phone. Mobile phone menu is fantastic where you've got very little real estate and you want to hide that menu. Um, however a computer screen you would probably want to have that menu more easily accessed because there's no real advantage to hiding it. Now we want to do adaptive views so we have a different menu for each view. If I go to my outline you can see I've got my mobile menu master here. Now interestingly if I go to large display you see how everything is in red? That's because I put it all there um, in the phone view and it doesn't inherit up, it only inherits down. So if I'd placed all of that content in the large display, it would still be on the portrait phone display, but not the other way around. You can click on affect all views if you want. The other thing, if I want to put these here, all I need to do is right click place in view and that's how you can add all of the stuff back into your page again and likewise if you want to hide something you can hide from view. I don't want to put the mobile menu master of course because that's only for my um, for my mobile phone view. So I'm just going to place these side by side because really this is what you would do in having a computer screen view um, and I might have a few extra images here. Let's just align those a bit. There we go. I mean, this is not the, the best design ever, but um, you know, it works. It's okay. So I've added these. What I might do is move that up. Oopsie, come up. There we go. So we've got our outline index. Our mobile menu master is at the top. We've got a few placeholder images. But interestingly, if I go back to portrait phone, you see what I said about it inherits um, down, it doesn't inherit up. So if I were to move these things down here now, you might think, oh, this is going to be never ending. Once I go back into large display, it'll be moved as well. No, it doesn't. Um, because again, you can make the changes in portrait phone that don't ex um, affect large phone. Um, you can make it affect the large phone if you click on affect all views just here, but I don't want to do that. Uh, so I'm just going to go to each of my pages and just move things around a little bit. Uh, apologies if you already know how to do this uh, quite easily, um, but there are people who don't have as much experience. So I just do want to show how easy it is to place things back in the view. Um, and again, I'll just move this over here. Zooming out so I can see the page a little bit better. 
uh, I might add another one. Whoops, see, that didn't add anything. Copy, paste. There we go. And then I'm just going to move this text over to the middle. Looks looks a bit silly, but, you know, uh, actually what I'll do is I'll move my headings to the middle as well. And again, I'm going to have to go back to the portrait phone to fix that. This is why actually it's a much better idea to do the um, the computer view first. And you can also delete stuff. See how um, that placeholder is now red? It's basically saying you have deleted it just from this view, not from the main view. So we go back to large and we've still got all three of those. Um, if I go to large, let's move this to the middle too. There we go. That just looks a little bit more orderly. Um, and we'll do the same here. We'll go to our large display. We're going to place everything in the view except for our mobile menu. There we go. And now if I zoom out again, uh, I might decide I'm just going to oops, bring that to the middle here might make it a little bit wider or at least these three a little bit wider. There we go, might make this a little bit wider as well. And I'll make, oopsie, Let's see if it lets me, nope, no, it's not going to let me do that evenly. So I'll just put it over here like that. Okay. And one last, oh, hang on, nope, nope, nope. Large display, portrait display, it's put everything back again. So let's just pop that over here. And of course, I would need to make sure everything was still measuring okay as well. Um, but I am just dragging it over. There we go. Excellent. Um, interestingly, you see how I didn't have to re-resize the button? There are some widgets that, um, yeah, you can't have dynamically change across views and you sort of figure those ones out as you go. Uh, so large display again. Let's place all of these back in the view. Here we go. What am I missing? Yeah. Missing one of my placeholders. That's oh no, I hadn't got to all of them yet. Didn't scroll down long enough. Okay, that's fine. So what I might want to do here for my large display is actually have it a little bit more grid-like here. Oopsie, just drag that over too. Here we go, and then I might move that product to the middle as well. Okie dokie, and then I fix it here. <laughs> okay, fabulous. So now I've got all of those in my different views, so now I can add my menu. Uh, I'm just going to make a very, very simple menu. You'll need to watch uh, one of the other videos on making custom menus to see how to make it pretty. I just want to show you the difference in adaptive views. So if I drag an H3 over and I have a nice little subtle one in the corner. So here we go. Call this oopsie, home. Let's zoom in a bit. Copy and paste. About us, copy and paste. Well, my other pages, contact us, that's right. And if I can move these to the left a bit, copy and paste and products. Okay, and maybe I'll just um, distribute those a little bit. Oh, it's not going to, oh, deselected it, silly. Okay, horizontal, that spaces them a little bit better. I might have a just a little bit of a horizontal line underneath it. There we go. Okay, I quite like that. That's fine. I might extend that just a little bit here. Okay, and so I would want to make this into a dynamic panel or a... Um, 
a master that I can repeat across the pages, but I'll do a dynamic panel first. So I'm going to right click, create dynamic panel, and I'm going to call this um, large menu DP. And then let's make a master. So create master, and we'll call this large menu master. Okie dokie. And now, uh, yep, it's all snapped to the top left, which is nice, but I don't actually want it there. Again, I'm really, really lazy, so I want to make sure it's snapped exactly where I want it. And that would be, the width has to be around 1200. Like I said, you can't have um, adaptive, ooh, let's move this over. You can't show the adaptive views in the master, which is a real pain, but here is the mark for 1200. I've just dragged a guide over, so now I know exactly where 1200 is. I'm just gonna drag that over there. So this is where I want my menu on all pages, and this just makes it easier, because in my masters, I can now go right click, drop behavior, lock to master location. And now if I go on my pages in my large display, I can drag this over and it will click. I'll do this on, actually I'll do it page by page in detail. So we've got that, but then if we go to portrait phone, it's still there. So you can either right click in here and go unplace from view. Remember how we place things from view? You can unplace from view. Oops, and all of these have gone awry, so let's go and put them back where they belong. There we go, and just check that that's, yeah, that's fine. Okay, we'll go to About, we'll do the same thing. We'll drag the Large Menu Master, and you see how this one's red? It means it's not there. Large Menu Master is there. However, we need to go to Portrait Phone. You can also right-click on the Dynamic Panel, or the, sorry, the Master itself, or whatever it is, and Unplace from View there, and that works equally well. Um, so I'm going to keep doing this. And that's fine in that view. We need to go to portrait, right click, unplace from view. Last one. Uh, whoops, hang on. Ah, oh, this was already here and I just moved it. Remember how I moved it before to align it and that just did really weird things. So there we go. That's back in its spot. Again, uh, portrait phone. We can unplace from view. So you're unplacing from view, not set hidden in that case. It's always unplace from view. So I'm just going to save this and we're going to test it. So we go to preview. Okay, yep, this is working. Oh, except I haven't put the links in. Hoi, I'm not going to bother with that. We can see it there. That works. That's fine. Um, so if we go to portrait phone, we can see we've still got this one. But if I am switching to my large display, now the other thing you can do is change to adaptive. And that means theoretically, as you shrink, it changes. There we go. So you can see it changes between the menus, which is lovely. Um, because that menu doesn't work, I can actually move around using the frame menu, um, or I can move around using my mobile menu. But if I go to adaptive view and hide this, yep, you see how that changes from view to view. And that's just lovely. So that's working okay. And of course, you'd want to style your menu up with um, rollovers, with hovers, you know, so it changes the color of the links or something like that. You might also want to show the active page and previous videos showed you that.